Welcome to lecture 49, exercise 2. The challenge for this exercise is to create a console-based program whose main method prompts the user for an integer value and in turn passes the value to a method that squares the number and to a method that cubes the number. The cube method should call the square method. The main method displays the, re the results returned from each of the other methods. So what basically is going on here is we're going to get a number from the user and we want to basically square that number and cube that number. We, we want the main method to actually print the result so it's kind of giving you a hint that the function should return the value back to the main method. The, the functions itself should not be printing them. So they want you to return it back to the main method. The, the real tricky part of this is that it's saying that the cube method should call the square method. And the reason why that is is because the cube method is basically a number times itself three times, whereas a squared method will take the number and multiply it by itself two times. So two is less than three, so the cube method can essentially use the squared method and then get the results of that and then just times itself again one more time and then, then, then it would be cubed. So you're basically using the squared method inside of the cubed method because the squared method is a smaller version of the cubed method basically. So if you'd like to try this on your own go ahead and pause the video now and try it otherwise I'm gonna go over it now. So the first thing I want to do is get that number from the user so I'm gonna say console.write line enter enter a number. Once I enter in the number, I'm going to store it into a variable called number by saying int number equals int dot parse console dot read line. And now I have the number stored inside of this number variable. Now I want to build the squared, uh, the squared method first. So I'm going to say public static int. I'm returning an int because it says to return it back to the caller. I'm not displaying it inside the function. I'm sending it back to whoever's calling this function and then they can print it themselves or do whatever they want with it. Then I'm going to call it square. And it takes in a number itself. So it takes an int number. So what this is going to do is I can either just go return number times number because to square a number it's just the number times itself or I can make it a little bit cleaner and say int answer equals number times number and then I can return the answer. Now remember when you say return on anything that sends it back to the call. So whoever's calling this function or invoking this function they'll get the answer back through the function and then they can do whatever they want with it. So that's the squared function. Now we need to build a cube function. So I'm going to say public static int because it's going to return the answer again. Cube and it will take in a number. Once I have that number, I'm going to say int answer equals. Now I could say number times number times number and return answer. So this would be correct. A, a cubed number is a number times itself three times. So number times number times number, that's a cube of a number. However, my squared function is a number times itself two times. So I could essentially use this in, in place of this and then just attach on the third to be more efficient. So I can say cubed is the answer equals the square of number times number. Now the reason why this works is because square of number returns an integer. So it go that then goes to here. It does whatever it does and returns an integer. The integer comes back and replaces this function called right here and then whatever the answer is I tack on another number to it by doing times number again. So this cubed is utilize, utilizing the square function and then adding to it to make it a cube function and then returning it. This makes it a slightly more efficient. So now the rest of the, the challenge is to simply just cube or square and cube the number that's typed in. So I'm going to say int squared equals square, oops, square passing in number. So squared will have the number. The reason why I'm saying int squared equals is because, like I said, the squared function is returning the answer. 
it's not printing it. So in order to print it, I need to actually get the number into a variable and then print it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to use placeholders. I'm going to say this squared is one. So the first placeholder is the number that's typed in. And then the second is the number squared. So let's go, let's run that and see what happens. So enter number five. 5 squared is 25. That is correct. Now let's do cubed. So I'm going to say int cubed equals cube number. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to change this to cubed. And I'm going to put in the cubed number instead. So let's run that. Enter a number 5. 5 squared is 25. 5 cubed is 125. Now, I want to show you what's happening behind the scenes, so I'm going to put in a breakpoint on this cubed call, and this allows me to basically see what the computer is doing. So when I run this program, I'm going to type in 5. Let's close this, and this, and this, and this. Okay. So I can see the program starting. Let's step into it. So it comes into cube, and it says, okay, I need to evaluate this line of code. But, oh, wait, there's a function inside of it. So it's going to step in, and it's going to go into the function because it says, okay, square. So now it's going to square. So it goes into here, and it says, okay, 5 times 5 is going to be equal to what? Let's see, 25. So the answer is 25, and it says, okay, return answer, basically. And that will go back into the cubed function because the cubed function called this square. So now this, this right here evaluates to 25 right now because that's what it got back from here. It returned 25, and then now this is 25. So then it goes 25 times 5, which will get the answer cubed. So if I step through, you can see answer is now 125. This was 25. This was 5, thus making this 125. It then returns at 125 back to the caller up here, and then... This becomes 125, which then sets this to 125. If I step into it, now you can see cubed is 125 because I got it back from this. This is all the power of the return statement. Then I simply attach the 5 and 125 into this output, and that's the answer. So the, the hardest part of this exercise was just having the cubed function use the square function, being able to see that a function can call another function that you defined.